So welcome to the ABC Core Call. Uh, we start with the updates from the interchain team. Uh, Susana from the product side. I think we cannot hear you, Susana. You're muted, Susana. I muted us, sorry. Uh, can you hear me now? Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, the main, some of the main things we've been looking into is um, like improvements to ICA and also looking a bit into uh, some of the pain points people have for using middleware. Uh, so if anyone has anything to add to that, then yeah, feel free to reach out. Yes, also, I guess, along with the like JSON encoding PR uh, for ICA packets, um, there's a repo that I wrote, which is basically the, an ICA controller uh, written in Cosmosm. So it's a Cosmosm implementation of the ICA controller that we use to end to end test this feature. Um, so uh, you can also see how a contract would basically act as the ICA controller and communicate. With the um, with the ICA host using JSON packets um, and yes, um, so this is the example. Cool, thanks. <clears throat> then um, we can give an update from engineering and protocol. So last iteration, uh, we release uh, v seven point two. Um, yeah, Chainapsis and Stride reported uh, a bug related to a transaction with Ledger. And we fixed that um, and released uh, last uh, Thursday. Uh, yeah, so that was it. And then, um, yeah, in the last uh, couple of weeks uh, for Western clients, the team has been reviewing the the code uh, from the PR that is open in IBC Go that the Steve opened. Uh, we had several sessions and um, there was some feedback collected and uh, we're opening issues uh, with that feedback. Um, yeah, and the idea is now try to merge the PR that is currently open uh, as soon as possible. And then, uh, yeah, start working on the on the improvements on follow-up PRs. Uh, yeah, and we'll yeah. discuss with yeah, Carlos, Jack. I guess yeah. I just had a quick question around this. Yeah. Um, you know, this PR has been in flight for a long time. We've shared the design for months now, these are some material changes after we've undergone audits. I'm just trying to understand what the impetus for this is and how this will affect timelines as far as merge. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Um, so yeah, so some, some of these changes uh, indeed have um, um, yeah, relatively large impact because uh, yeah, they, they also affect the contracts. Um, the majority of those changes uh, that have impact on the contract is because um, we thought we think that to make the the O8 was a module a true a proxy, uh, it would be good to make these changes so so that we the the O8 was a module basically delegates all the responsibilities to to the contracts. Uh, at the moment, there are a few places in which the module uh, is, for example, setting client state, consensus state. Um, yeah, uh, I, I guess what I'm trying to understand, Carlos, is why now? Why why was this not? Yeah, yeah. the the reason yeah. why is now is because yeah, basically the the team started to review this like uh, two three weeks ago. Previously, the PR is true; it was open for a while, and and I was working with Steve uh, making changes there. Uh, and once I yeah. saw that, okay. The PR is really not. Carlos, enough for I, I, I hear you on this. I guess the feedback from Strange Love would be that it, it's really hard when to to plan timelines around things like this when things take so long, and then and then material feedback comes this late in the game. It's kind of it it, it doesn't as a contributor it it makes things challenging. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I understand. Um. Yeah. Um, yeah. We. Yeah. I, I understand. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry that this feedback comes this late. We've been busy with a, a lot of stuff, and this was the, the the moment when the team could review. Um, 
This is, yeah, Steve, as Carlos, you know, we, we've been working very hard on this for, for now years. And we've been transparent about our design the entire way. We've worked really hard to solicit feedback from your team. And it's just like, I understand your position on this. I just hope you understand mine. Sure, sure. I, I understand as well. Great. Yeah. Um, Thank you, Carlos. And, and I will try for, for future collaborations to improve the process and, and yeah, learn from this. Um, regarding timelines, I, I still hope that uh, with the help of uh, Steve and Blas, if we can work together on this, hopefully uh, we can yeah, uh, address all this feedback uh, during the next three, four weeks, and then hopefully be able to release early in August. Yeah, I, you know, we have projects that are launching with this code soon. Mm -hmm. This is business critical for everyone who's worked on it. And mm -hmm. it's something that needs to move. So yes, early August would be fantastic. Um, let's try to hit that. Yeah. That's a, yeah. that, that's, that's a great way to to sort of like make up for the, the last minute changes in the long review cycle is if we can get this in by early August. I and the composable team would greatly appreciate it. Cool. Then we will try our our best to make it. And yeah, if, if Steve uh, is okay to help us here, that would be great. Then I think we can, yeah, move faster. Yeah, Steve Steve is, is working on this. You know, yeah. again, this is also like, makes it hard for us to plan because Steve has other projects that he works on yeah. and we're hoping to, you know, move some other things forward. And when he gets pulled for last minute feedback on something critical, it, it makes planning on our side hard. Yeah, um, I understand. Um, yeah. I, I will try to be mindful of that and, um, yeah, be mindful of his time. Yeah. So we don't need to. Yeah, it too would, much. would really appreciate some respect for the, the strange love team on this and, and thank you for hearing me carlos yeah no problem all right yes okay so then yeah and one thing that we were also discussing is that uh, we would like the oh it wasn't to have its own go mode uh, so it will be released independently from ivc go um so that there's um, yeah the release is independent yes wait what is it going to be in the repo? Yeah, yeah, it will be in the repo. It will just have its oh, own like SDK style yeah. new modules yeah, yeah. having their own code on. Okay. Yes. Yes. Sorry. All right. And, um, okay. Uh, then if we continue, then for the 7.3 release, which was previously 7.2, but had to be bumped, uh, yeah, we are working on two features, adding the JSON encoding for uh, the ICA, uh, ICA messages uh, and the a a a ADR8 middleware for custom wasm. Um, Serdar, would you like to give some update here, both of these features? Um, for the ADR8 features and uh, the JSON or encoding? Or the JSON encoding, right? anything? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, JSON encoding we talked about a little bit earlier. So the idea here is that, um, you know, the ICA uh, host module accepts um, transactions currently only in protobuf format. So, and that requires like smart contracts to have to use some protobuf libraries. Uh, so to basically avoid that, um, we are using the uh, SDK's uh, JSON codec, which is able to serialize and deserialize in ease using uh, JSON, a, a JSON format. And uh, what I found is that if we, to recreate this JSON format in Cosmosm is not very difficult. So this, what this PR is doing is basically uh, doing the handshake, enabling the um, controller or like uh, the, you know, the handshake initiator to define what encoding type they would like to use. And then as long as um, you, mm, you define the JSON format correctly, the um, host will be able to accept packets. So this way you don't need to have any external dependencies on your smart contract to communicate yeah. with ICA. And the example is the one I shared in the meeting chat that like this one, this contract also has end-to-end -end test where you literally complete a handshake. Uh, sorry, I couldn't hear you. What did you say? 
Sorry, oh. background noise. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah, so basically the Antoinette has basically complete a handshake with the JSON, uh, with the JSON encoding and then um, send both custom transactions where the user can just write the transactions as JSON and the contract just passes that on. Or you, uh, the contract can have a set of predefined actions as an enum and then uh, execute those, which are like basically uh, SDK NEs, the, those predefined actions. And yeah, you can see this um, in the contract itself. And the second feature, the ADR8, is basically we want to have the ability of executing um, destination or source callbacks. Um, and I guess there are some uh, design requirements we had to meet um, for that. So number one is it needs to be able to compose with any module that um, implements a certain interface. Uh, so we basically have a couple of interfaces and any IBC module that implements it will be able to execute callbacks. Um, so that's number one. Another design feature is that this should be stateless. So some of the like you know IBC hooks uh, isn't stateless, but having it be stateless it, like makes wiring much more simple. And the f the nature of the feature itself doesn't necessarily require to be have have any state. So it doesn't even register as an SDK module. So it's just a very lightweight module to add to your uh, chain. Uh, I guess um, another thing is um, we need to be able to determine like. You know, the user can define how much gas the, the callback can execute and things like that. So we allow some, uh, we allow some, um, yeah, customizability there. And finally, it's kind of uh, more VM agnostic in the sense that any, uh, so it, it has like a, it, it's, it has an expected keeper where as long as you implement a couple of methods to handle the callback, um, it, you can basically, this middleware can wrap any kind of VM keeper, as long as it just implements a couple of functions. But it is still in work in progress, so it's still in draft mode. Hopefully, um, yeah, development for this will continue, yeah, uh, quickly. Thank you, Shredder. Um, so if there are no question, then for V8, um, yeah, on, on general credibility, yeah, in this iteration, we will have a um, happy test, um, yeah, happy path test of the whole handshake, of the whole upgrade handshake. Um, we're going to also do a um, first internal audit, um, alpha audit. And we're also starting to work on uh, figuring out how to support the uh, governance gated upgrades. Uh, yeah, the idea is that the, the upgrades will be approved by governance. Uh, so we started to discuss uh, together with Susanna uh, what use cases need to be supported and what's possible from the technical side. Um, um, yeah, we will continue with that and write issues, uh, etc. Yeah, so that's channel readability. Then uh, we're also um, starting to review the, the PRs from Jacob for the upgrade to SDK 50, 050. Um, yeah, um, so hopefully by the end of the iteration, the the upgrade to the alpha tag uh, can be merged to the feature branch. All right, so that's a bit what we're doing uh, on IBC Go. Then on the specs, um, Aditya opened a PR uh, last week uh, to add path forwarding to ICS20. Uh, so that's the link there. So if somebody wants to have a look and give some feedback, that would be great. Um, I don't know, Aditya, if you want to maybe elaborate a bit more. Yeah, I mean, this is um, very in line with the discussions we've already had on this topic. It's basically Faint Love's work on the uh, coding forwarding middleware, bringing that kind of as a native feature, um, and then also providing the ability for um, hopefully eventually users to be able to specify things as chains and then use registries to resolve them, rather than the current use case where people need to put local identifiers, which I think is is a much worse UX, especially when these identifiers are for each chain are changing. Um, as you move forward in the path. So um, 
Yeah, it's probably kind of at the, at the underlying layer, sort of this packet core middleware idea with core, just putting it in core ICS20 and then adding the, the token, the chain registry as a option feature. So it would be useful to get some feedback. Chain registry? This is a registry to, uh, right now with token forwarding, you need to pass in all the path identifiers. And then here, this would be users pass in a list of chains and on chain, we can resolve them into the channel ID. You have a design for that? We do not at the moment. It's currently um, kind of black boxed uh, as part of Oh, wait, I think I this is like a local chain registry, not like a global chain registry, right? Cool. Um, yeah. I, I feel like Dean's ideas around pet names might be fun here. And maybe uh, if, if we're planning on a local one, um, maybe we could figure out how to do that. Dean, is that talking crazy or is that just... <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, say more what you're thinking. I was a little distracted. Yeah, so we need some way to sort of like label certain channels um, as more official than others. Right. Um, there's the global chain registry idea, which I've been thinking about for a long time, but you know, the easier way to do this would be to give every chain an address book and allow each chain to name its own channels, yeah. which is a more Cosmosy solution. And that's starting to sound a lot more like pet names. Yep. I'm interested mm -hmm. if you have any input there. Mm -hmm. um, there, is a, there is a question as to how they, uh, you know, the, the pet names is really each user names its own channel, the, or rather that's sort of the, 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 the end user experience. There is a, um, if you have a naming context, um, you know, that like, like whatever, not chain registry, but like the asset lists or the, the, the chain list, those are an example of effectively a directory, right? And what you want is to be able to name which directory, you know, here's my overrides and which directory am I using? You know, which directory am I, uh, you know, am I including by reference, if you will, um, uh, for, uh, for names that I'm gonna resolve? Um, so when I look up a name, if I've got a name for it, great. Otherwise, I've named the osmosis uh, 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 asset name list as the, the names I want to use, which are separate from the, you know, the Agoric or the Gaia Hub or whatever it is. Um, and so uh, users would, in their wallet, have defaulted to using one of those naming contexts that would end up being the the um you know would, would end up being the way they resolve names that some group that they're familiar with um uh, uh, uh you know was used to basically Does that makes sense yeah it does um I, I guess like Aditya while we're thinking about this thinking about we're only planning on a local chain registry. Let's try to make it something that could be pet namesy. Um, yeah, I just think that during the design phase, it's a good opportunity to help improve UX throughout the ecosystem, especially like, yeah. honestly, I, I think that this path unwinding stuff is like neat and fun, but mm -hmm. the registry for authoritative IBC data that enables chains to, to store this data and, and use it is a much better developer affordance that will lead to many other features in the future. Um, so yeah, love that you guys are working on this. That's that's great. Yeah. yeah. The way that we intend it is that like this isn't like the local registry will be in ICS20 or anything like that. It's like ICS20 will be consuming from this registry. And that's kind of designed so that you know, obviously it's not just ISIS 20, but NFTs and all sorts of, you know, this is just DNS for IBC, which I think is long overdue. Um, so uh, yeah, it would be good to kind of use this as an opportunity to see how we want the interfaces to work and what we yeah. want the data to look like. And then, and then hopefully, I mean, obviously this should expand to other use cases as well. 
Yeah, one of the nice things that, about sort of that, that the pet name thing we were talking about is it really is pretty upwards compatible from the naming list that people currently have or have been thinking in terms of. You know, chains solve some problem locally. Um, what you want to be able to do is look at it and go, oh, you know, this is, you know, this is Adam I got from Osmosis from 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 Gaia Hub. You know, and it's the same one that 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 you know Jack referred to, or it's the same one that that some app referred to. You know, I understand it. I understand how you know I, I could use it. <laughs> I could value it. Mm. So happy to spend some time with people on it. Maybe we set up some time to once you guys have a, or a little further on the address book stuff to to talk through this with the Agoric folks, Aditya. Yeah, I think that would be useful. Um, I am still in. I am in Lisbon, so uh, so oh, uh, we'll be in Paris. Okay. We can do some of this in person, possibly. Yeah, I, mean, I can look at the dates. Worst case, European time zone works well for us. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, then that was our updates um, from Relayer teams, uh, Hermes. Yeah. Uh, I, just before that, uh, I have just a quick question. Uh, what are the expectations around local host clients' uh, support in Hermes? Um, yeah, that's... Uh, uh, up to you guys. Um, so the yeah, the feature is completed and released in seven point one. Um, the Golang layer uh, is going to support the feature in the next release. So yeah, depends on what when you guys can can add the support for it. Okay, thanks. Uh, then for the Hermes updates, uh, we resumed working on the channel upgradeability. Uh, on that note, uh, is it correct that you have up to the ACK step that's uh, implemented in IBC Go? Uh, no, it, it should be up to the open step. So the whole handshake should be, yeah, basically completed by now. If I'm not mistaken, I think we have all the PRs merged. No, I think we're still waiting on the open message server to be merged. But then, yeah, once that's merged, then the, the whole handshake should be there in the feature branch. Um, yeah, but it, it should be merged by within this week. The code is there. We're just waiting for the final reviews. Okay, thanks. And other than channel upgradeability, we're working on improving our test framework, like basically what we're testing. Mm -hmm. All right, thanks. Then for the Go Relayer. Uh, yeah. Don't really have much of an update, actually, from the last time that we met. Um, team's been kind of spread amongst other projects, still waiting for a review on the local host work. And then as far as the channel upgrade ability, um, we do have an issue open for it. I imagine that that gets picked up in our next sprint, which would be next week. OK. Mm -hmm. Any estimates on when the local host could be merged and released? Um, that's a good question. Um, I will nudge some people again today to try and get that through review. Okay. And then, like, once it's merged, it like, getting a release cut shouldn't be too hard. Okay. Cool. Um, the, then uh, maybe a question for Agoric. Uh, once, yeah, the the release of the Golan Relayer is also out. Um, do you guys have plans of upgrading to seven point well two better seven point two any anytime soon or to use the feature or question maybe for Dean uh, or somebody else from Agoric? I I can feel that question. Sorry, um, you... go ahead. Okay, so yeah, basically we have we have plans to do a series of upgrades in the next couple of weeks. And we wanted to do them in fairly small steps, just in case we can't make one work fully, then we still have something. Um, so 
That includes both update, updating to latest SDK 47, uh, possibly 50 or whatever, whenever it comes out. Mm -hmm. um, and we expect to update IBC along the way. And I think the requirements of seven are for SDK 46 or something. Or they... uh, no, IBC Core 7 is with SDK 47, yeah. 47, okay. Yeah. So that that is in our plans to okay. do those simultaneously with the SDK updates. Okay, great. Thank you. All right, then any other topics or updates that anybody would like to share? I have a question, which you might have touched on before I got here. I was wondering whether for packet forward middleware, um, whether uh, that whether there was a, any any prospect of that getting a uh, uh, security audit. Sorry, any prospect of of, of that? What uh... getting security audited, third party audit? Oh, security audit. Maybe a question for. I mean, I, I think we're we're interested in that. Um... We haven't been funded for the packet middleware work. If anyone's interested in helping us out with an audit, we're more than happy to okay. quarterback that. Okay, so it's, let's say. It's like five million. Okay. Yeah, okay. Okay. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. All right. Anything else? Any other questions, topics? All right, if not, then we can leave it here. Thanks everyone for joining. Thank you everyone. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, sir. See you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.